In this video, I'll show you how to make a mobile scavenger hunt project that uses geolocation aware features in Adobe Captivate 9. At the 2016 Adobe Learning Summit, I presented a session on creating mLearning in 60 minutes. I think my talk was successful in getting everyone excited about the possibilities behind using location-aware features in Captivate, but my demo didn't work as planned, so I thought I would share the correct procedures in today's video. So let's get started here. So I've built basically the shell of the course. I've got a title page, and I have these slides here where we talk about various landmark features that are located on the Las Vegas Strip. Now, all I need to do to make it work is to put some variables into play and some advanced actions. So I'm going to start off with this one here, the MGM Lion. In this scavenger hunt activity, users will be required to find the actual locations of various landmarks in Las Vegas. So they're running around with their smartphones or their wireless connected tablets, whatever it might be. And as they approach these various landmarks, uh, it'll automatically detect that they've approached the, in this case, the MGM Lion, and then take them to a question slide where if they do a little bit of research, they should be able to find the answer to all these questions in and around the locations that they've been brought to. What's required here is a little bit of advanced actions and some variables. So let's get started with that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create an advanced action that's going to load on this page on the on enter action. So I'm going to select execute advanced actions. I don't have any scripts yet, so we'll just click on the advanced actions icon. And this is going to be a standard project or standard advanced action rather. What we're going to call this is we'll call it get underscore first underscore frame. So it's pretty straightforward as to what's happening here. So we need to create a variable first to store that frame in that we're going to capture. So I'm going to click the variables button at the bottom right hand corner of the advanced actions window and we're going to click on add new. This variable, I'm just going to call it VAR, which is short for variable. It'll be easier to find my variables later if I do something like that. Also, uh, make it clear uh, which object names are, in fact, variables and which are items and shapes and pictures and so on. So, underscore, variable underscore, uh, we'll call this first underscore frame and its initial value will be zero and we'll hit save and I'll just close this window and what we want to do here is we want to assign our variable so if you start typing in VAR the list of variables you've created in this case it's just one so far will show up I can select that and then I can assign that the value associated with a system variable, which is going to be CP info, and we'll scroll down to find it here, current frame, there it is. That's it, that's what I need to capture my first frame. I'm gonna save this as an action, click on okay, click on close, and there it is. So on enter, we're gonna capture the frame number at the very beginning of this slide. The next thing we need to do is we need to create another advanced action. In this case, it will be a conditional action where we're going to check our current location on the world map and see where we're located and make a decision uh, whether to stay on this slide and continue to loop on this slide for possibly forever and ever, or to jump ahead to the question slide if we've arrived at the right location. So how we do that, we go to the on exit action. In this case here, uh, there's nothing to interfere with that. So we're going to execute advanced actions. By default, it always selects the, uh, if there's only one script or the current script available, but we're going to change that in a moment. And I click on the advanced actions icon to create a new uh, advanced action. 
But in this case here, we're going to be creating a conditional action. So we're going to select that from the action type dropdown. Now we're going to call this check for lion. You can call it whatever you want, but that's just what we're sort of doing here. Now I'm going to need some variables for this. I'm going to need one variable for this. So let's hit variable and uh, we're going to add a new variable and we'll call this VAR underscore lion underscore location. Kind of a long name, but you know, in case anyone has to pick up a project from you in the future, it's always good to name things so that it's very clear what they are. Now, how do I enter latitude and longitude in here? Well, I don't. I actually check off this geolocation checkbox, and that's going to replace the single variable with three pieces of information, latitude, longitude, and accuracy. You can type them in if you want, but the far easier approach is to use the Google API map just by clicking this globe, and this will bring you to the uh, world map here, in this case centered on the United States, and we could probably help it along by typing in the address or the name of the location that we're trying to look for. So I'm just going to type in Las Vegas, Nevada. There we go. So we're pretty close to Las Vegas, probably pretty close to where that lion is too. So you want to kind of zoom in this uh, this range area here on the outside or accuracy level. Keep zooming in until we get close enough that we can maybe switch to satellite view and find the actual item that we're looking for. Okay, so this is the MGM property right here. Um, I'll zoom in one more step there and bring this down to about 30 meters is probably, well, we'll start with that. There we go. The MGM line is located over here in the bottom uh, western corner of the property. I'm going to switch to satellite so I can make sure I'm getting as close as I possibly can. There it is. So that's the statue right there. I'm just going to um, position this on, not just on the statue, but where people might actually walk. So we're going to cover the sidewalk. The statue really can't go behind it. So I'm just going to go with this particular setting right there. Once you have the area that you're going to be looking for, you can click Submit. And all that information is now filled out for you. So no need to figure out your latitude and longitude and type them in manually. Make sure you hit save at this point. And we're going to hit close. Now we can write our advanced action for checking for the lion. So we're going to start off with the if portion of our statement here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the variable and the variable we're looking for is CP info geolocation is equal to, in this case, remember we've stored that information in the variable VAR lion location. So if the geolocation is equal to the lion location, we're going to go to the next slide where we're going to test the learner's ability to find some information out about that location. So we'll go to the next slide, very simple. If they have not arrived at that location, we want to continue to loop this slide until they do. So what we want to do here is we want to assign, and we're going to use a variable that's also a command, and that's CP command, go to frame and resume, and we're going to assign that with the variable we created in the first uh, advanced action, and that's first frame. So I'm going to save this as an action, click on OK, and click on Close, and make sure I've updated the script to check for Lion. So that's basically how this will work. We're going to add 
a, and I've already done it for us here, a sound of a jackpot uh, ringer or bell, if you will, uh, very appropriate for Las Vegas, of course. And this will set off that sound when the MGM lion has been detected, the location has been detected, and now we're sending them to the question slide and asking them to answer something about the location. In this case, there's a plaque right below the lion that provides some information about it, telling the user, of course, that it's 45 feet tall. Now what I need to do is duplicate um, a version of those advanced actions for my other locations. And this is gonna be really straightforward here. So the next location I'm gonna have them search for is the M&M's World, which is just down the street a little ways here. We're gonna to go to the Actions tab. The good news is, is that I can use that uh, Get First Frame uh, Advanced Action again. It doesn't even need to be a shared action because I can always reassign that variable for every slide that I want to do this on. On the exit though, of course, we're going to have to make a copy of that original Lion advanced action and just change it a little bit for the uh, M&M store. So let's execute advanced action. We'll select check for Lion for now, but we're going to change that. So we're going to open up the advanced action. The very first thing we need to do is duplicate this action. So we're making a copy of it. And I'm just going to change the title first of all. Check for, and in this case here, we'll just say M N N, M N M. <laughs> and uh, we need to make a new variable. In this case, a variable for that location here. So I'm just going to add a new one, and we're just going to call this V A R underscore M N M underscore location and the value again we're going to check off geolocation click the map now where satellite becomes useful is that actually if you can find this location you can see one of the m m statues from the satellite view so let's just get in nice and close here I think we should be able to find it. There it is there, actually. Uh, I'm going to go again to the two-dimensional map. I prefer that. But whatever works for you, you may find that the two-dimensional map is a little more accurate. There's the M&M guy right there. So we're just going to center on that. Yeah, I think that works. I'll just hit submit here. and hit save, close. And all we need to do, all of this is gonna be the same. The only thing we need to change is the location we're checking against. So now we can type in variable, VAR, and m, &M location. Let's save or update this action. Click on close, make sure we've updated it over here. And one more change to our New York, New York location. This is the hotel across the street from the MGM Grand. Uh, again, execute advanced action. We're going to get that first frame. And then we're going to execute advanced actions on the exit. And let's just use the m, &M example. We'll hit that. And we're going to duplicate this because, again, we want to make a copy of it. We don't want to edit the one that's there already. And we're going to check for and I'll just call this New York, New York, and go to variables, VAR underscore New York, New York underscore location, and again, a geolocation spot. So let's find that, and we'll just, again, I'll start off with that MGM Grand Las Vegas and the search for that. And the New York, New York Hotel and Casino is located right there. Uh, if you wanna be sure, you can switch to satellite view. And if you get in real close there, you can see the Statue of Liberty and so on. And again, I wanna make sure that this is covering all the area around it. So maybe we'll center on the Statue of Liberty 
and that looks good like there so let's hit submit and save that variable hit close and uh, check for new york new york so we're going to update this if statement to be looking for the variable associated with the location of that hotel there we go and let's update the action hit close let's make sure we're looking for the the right uh, script here so get frame new york new york so i think we're good to go here we've got a project that's uh pretty well built so again at the uh, the question slide uh, I have it play a little jackpot sound which is going to be very appropriate for a casino type thing well let's uh, do a preview of this and see how it works so I'm going to uh, play or preview this project so a couple of points here I just want to point out I kept the toolbar or the play bar rather at the bottom of the project you can turn that off uh, from the uh, drop down menu in Adobe Captivate, um, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But the reason you might want to preview it is to make sure your loop is working. You'll see it jump ahead and then jump back and jump back and do that a whole bunch of times. Again, this was designed to be a mobile project, so you know, I recommend that when you're previewing it, you can try the different breakpoints, or more importantly, try all the various different points along the scale to make sure that everything works as you would expect it to. Uh, so let's keep it, uh, let's go with that right there. Uh, let's, yeah, let's just make it a little bit larger there. See how this works. And the other thing about previewing a geolocation uh, project is you'll have the ability to simulate what it would be like to be there without actually traveling several thousand miles to get to that location. So I can simulate it by selecting the variables that I've stored that geolocation in. So let's keep it nowhere for now. And I'll click next. So right here, uh, let's just large, enlarge that so I can see what it reads. So the MGM lion uh, in this scavenger hunt activity, you're required to find the actual locations of various landmarks in Las Vegas, Nevada. As you approach these landmarks, the content aware features in this e-learning project will activate and you'll be forced to ask a question uh, about the landmark that is in front of you. Your first landmark to find is the MGM Lion located somewhere on the MGM Grand property. So you can see on the play bar here, it's just looping the slide over and over and over again, checking to see where the location is. Are we close to the lion? Are we close to the lion? Well, let's simulate that. We'll choose the lion location. And I hear the little buzzer there, the little jackpot noise, and I'm confronted with my question here. So congratulations, you found the lion. Answer the following question. Now there's a plaque located right next to the lion that tells you some of the statistics about this particular statue. And one of those statistics is that the statue is 45 feet tall. So they can select that hit submit, correct, click anywhere or press Y to continue. So now they have to find M&M's World, your next landmark in this particular adventure. So let's uh, simulate what that's going to be like by selecting M&M location. Congratulations, you found the M&M's World shop. Answer the following question, what color is the lady M&M statue? And actually, we saw her on the uh, the Google Maps, and she's green. So let's hit submit. Correct. Now we need to find the New York, New York Hotel and Casino. So let's see if we can find it. And again, we can simulate that by selecting it from the drop-down menu. And there we are. Congratulations, you found the hotel and casino. What part of the hotel's appearance stands out as not something you would see in New York? Uh, in this case here, it's probably the roller coaster. I don't think there's one that goes around the Empire State Building and Lady Liberty. So let's hit submit. And there we go. And that brings us to the end of our project. Guys, if you're new to Captivate and are unsure about building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My goal is always to achieve your business goals through creating effective learning. You can find out more by visiting my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at paulwilsonld. 
And don't forget to get notified of my new videos. You must subscribe to my channel.